Good evening and welcome to the first day of Zagreb Book Festival. Our guest tonight is Jules Moreau, the author of the world-famous graphic novel Blue is the Warmest Color. Croatian audiences had a chance to see its film adaptation entitled Adele's Life. We'll talk to Jules about gender identity, the pandemic, Europe, artistic creation and, of course, about inclusive literature. I would like to welcome all of you who are with us tonight. If you're watching us via Zoom, I would kindly like to ask you to turn off your microphones in order to avoid any technical problems during this conversation. Thank you. Jules, this pandemic has affected all of our lives, healthcare systems, the economy, societies, but it has also affected our individual destinies and the culture of living in general. How has this crisis affected your life? Like everybody, as far as my work is concerned, when you work as a writer, it is difficult to work only from your art. We always do several jobs. And all of my jobs uh, stopped suddenly last year, and I stopped doing everything what I was doing. So I, I received less money. And also there was a, an artistic crisis for me, because in this uh, geopolitical and health uh, crisis uh, that uh, our generation has, has never faced so far, uh, we uh, found it very difficult to write, and I found it very difficult to write. Does that mean that you had existential fear uh, which prevented you from uh, creating, or are you going through a personal uh, creative crisis? exactly what you said. Me and my colleagues, uh, artists, uh, were faced uh, with uh, the situation of uh, trying to give meaning uh, uh, to our artistic work in this unprecedented crisis, uh, how to help people who are trying to survive this crisis. So in your graphic novels, uh, there have been five so far, you question gender identity. But you uh, mentioned fear. It seems to me that uh, fear, social distance, mask and isolation are the key words of the moment we live in. But they are also the key words of the process of growing up and socialization of LGBTIQ people. What does each of these terms mean to you today? Well, personally, I would say that uh, all of these uh, terms make up my uh, pandemic uh, life, uh, my life during this pandemic. And, but, but this will remain so even after the pandemic, but because when you are uh, marginalized, when you are in a patriarchy, uh, you have to be careful in order to survive. Uh, it is true, isolation and lockdown for uh, queer uh, people is very difficult. Uh, and then wearing masks uh, makes it harder for you to uh, recognize other person's uh, face. And uh, these are situations that uh, we are basically dealing with and this is something that was, that is very surprising in these in this context you asked me about the meaning of these words hmm, i'm not sure 
What does the term mask mean to you? So through uh, growing up and socialization of LGBTI persons, uh, most of these people have to wear masks uh, in terms of their parents, uh, in terms of the rest of the society. So uh, this dicto di di dichotomy of uh, this wearing masks and masks in general, what does that mean for you in, at this moment? D'accord, ok, donc on parle de masque symbolique en fait. Euh, C'est pour ça que j'avais pas bien saisi. Euh, merci. I probably didn't understand the question uh, the first time, so thank you for this explanation. As I was saying about this awareness uh, which is needed to survive, it is uh, necessary to wear masks uh, before we uh, reveal ourselves. And before we realize that we have to face coming out, whether we are talking about gay, trans, or any other type of coming out. So everybody has to be aware of the conditions uh, in which you will um, come out. And uh, we are afraid of uh, coming out of the closet. Uh, these can be very dangerous situations. I talked to, to young people and I told them um, to uh, be careful. Uh, they need to be surrounded by people, by friends, uh, who they are not afraid to be truthful to. So uh, general population probably now uh, is experiencing what uh, LGBTIQ uh, people are experiencing their whole life, especially uh, during the young age, because people had to face uh, fear that they uh, were not used to. They had to face distance, isolation, and uh, finally uh, masks. And uh, people are prevented for, from living their lives to the fullest in this uh, situation uh, so I'm talking about uh, um, LGBTIQ people uh, in this uh, heteronormative uh, patriarchy society so you're comparing uh, the pandemic and the LGBTIQ community we are comparing the situations the, the living conditions of uh, LGBTIQ uh, people, so uh, some of these um, things that they face uh, have basically affected the whole population during this time of pandemic. Okay, I understood your question now. I don't think these are the same levels, but People who weren't discriminated, uh, who had the benefit of not being discriminated, they are not discriminated against even now. But the general population today is facing uh, something that gay people uh, had to face uh, during the pandemic. Um, people were marginalized, discriminated against, and the government didn't really take care of them, didn't take them into consideration. And this is this so this is so called a gay virus, which is an extreme situation. I think that the situation that they are facing with, the people who are discriminated against are facing one types of situations, and people who suffered in this pandemic. Basically, people who suffered were minorities, and people who were rich got even richer thanks to this epidemic. I think the situation is very complicated, but it is true what you are saying. The fear has spread, and I think this is a comparison which is not sustainable. You mentioned uh, that your life is very difficult at the moment. Uh, you are currently living in Belgium. 
uh, does Belgium have uh, any kind of financial support program which helps artists to survive in this situation? I'm currently not in Belgium. Uh, I lived in Italy for the last five years, but I studied in Belgium. I uh, studied uh, comics. I studied at the uh, Academy of Fine Arts. I left Belgium uh, 10 uh, years ago, and I don't have any, any connections to this country anymore. So I really can't uh, answer your question. So my uh, sources of information were limited. So the last uh, piece of information that I uh, came across was that uh, you, live, you were living in Belgium, so I apologize for that. In your uh, work and public appearances, you question gender identity and identities. Is gender identity, in your opinion, a variable or a constant? Well, the answer to this question could take uh, a long time. It's a, it's a very, very comprehensive question. But this reminds me of another question, and that is, uh, what can we consider, uh, consider as a constant in this, these times? In my opinion, uh, one of the lessons learned uh, in this uh, health crisis uh, is a question about what is a constant in your life. So look at how the situation has changed in this pandemic. So if we talk about gender uh, identity, we can uh, say that um, biological gender doesn't uh, correspond to any constant. So we can't have any constant uh, in this type of topic. So what was your search for your own gender identity? How long did it take and did you find answers to all the questions that you had on that journey? Did you have more um, questions than the answers? Well, there were several questions. Uh, we are talking about a, a life's work. And as I said, for me, there is no such thing as a constant. Uh, this We are talking about uh, an expansion, um, a permanent expansion. I am always open, opening new doors, and I'm always finding new stuff behind these doors. And I think this is a journey which is fascinating. If we go back to the idea of fear, if you are afraid to uh, go on such a journey, but it is not the journey that frightens you, but uh, the society that is frightening, frightening you. And if there wasn't these uh, prejudices in society, this personal journey would be uh, much easier. The evolution of uh, society, especially in Europe, has led to uh, more open uh, discussions about gender policies. We can say that uh, some societies accept different gender identities. Uh, but in Europe, uh, we have a, a very strong uh, conservative uh, movement. Uh, and uh, it is uh, convincing the public that uh, it is in fact a gender ideology that threatens to overthrow patriarchy as the only correct order. Why is uh, the issue of gender identities so important for them? And um, are human rights of minorities in jeopardy, jeopardy if because of such movements? these right-wing right movements. Un sujet extrêmement sérieux. Um, en fait, well, this is a very serious topic. And I would say that gender identity, whether we are talking about a concept or idea, is not killing anybody. But patriarchy kills people. Patriarchy does a lot of harm a lot of evil 
it is a system which tries to impose uh, gender roles on the basis of our uh, gender only, on the basis of how we were born, uh, whether uh, as a boy or a girl. And this is a sexist approach. And this system does not take into consideration intersexual persons uh, who are neither men or women biologically. They have more complicated genes. Intergender persons account for uh, almost 2% of uh, world's population, almost uh, as uh, Russia. And we can't uh, deny that uh, there uh, are biologically different people, those who are neither men or women. I want to be precise about this because we are uh, always talking about what is uh, natural, um, quote unquote, and this is what these uh, right wing movements are trying to uh, tell us. Uh, they are trying to tell us what is against nature, what goes against nature. And 